schlock, and all films. Suppose you're ready. <laughs> all right, it is Wednesday, and we are now into October, which is Halloween month. Yes. 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 But yes. well, we're really shooting this in September, early September, but that's okay. Uh, so look who's back. <gasps> Madeline Page. Madeline Page is here. Oh. Um, all right. So, do you know who Ringo Starr is? Yes, I know who Ringo Starr is. Do you know who Harry Nielsen is? Oh, I do know that name. Mm -hmm. It's not um, clicking at this exact second. Yeah. Uh, Refresh me. He's a very famous. <gasps> oh my God, Elvira just rubbing up on you. I love you too. <laughs> Harry Nielsen is a very famous singer songwriter. Yeah. Um, I can't live living is without you. Uh, Celine Dion covered it. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I, I mean, can't live yeah. without you. No, not that one. I want to. Know. No, that's something. No, that. different. Uh, so Harry Nielsen is a very famous singer songwriter in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, he wrote all the music for the Robin Williams Popeye movie. Um, you ever saw that one? Nope. Really? Mm -mm. Okay. That's, uh, people hate that movie. I love that movie. Um, I'll do that review eventually. Uh, you got uh, fucking, you know, uh, the wife in, in The Shining playing Olive Oil. Okay. You know, it's it's great. It's fantastic. Um, and it's a yeah. musical, and, and Harry Nielsen did all the music for it. Did you ever see the movie Punch Drunk Love? I did not. With Adam Sandler? No. Oh, okay, so the main mm -hmm. song they use in that is He Needs Me, and that was actually the song from Popeye. Okay. Okay. So, Harry Nielsen, Ringo Starr, do you know who John Bonham is? Drummer for Led Zeppelin? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, in the 1970s, the Beatles, at the height of their power, started mm -hmm. a company called Apple. Mm -hmm. Not Apple Computers. Not the other yeah. App, yeah. Apple to do music, to do merchandising, to do movies. Right. Um, and Ringo wanted to do movies. So Ringo made a movie with the band T-Rex, okay. big band back then, yeah. um, and then he wanted to do a, a horror movie. So he made a movie called Son of Dracula. Oh. Son of Dracula, not the 1940s Universal right. Son of Dracula. The one that, uh, you know, uh, was directed by Freddie Farmer, who was a well-known British filmmaker at the time, uh, written by a woman who was an actress who'd never written anything before, and it shows, although the t after this movie they did an anthology movie together. Mm. So, Harry Nielsen plays the son of Dracula, mm -hmm. Count Down. Count Down? Yes. Uh, and Ringo Starr plays Merlin the Magician. <laughs> okay, I mean, look, it's Ringo. Okay? Yeah, I, but yeah. he's under a big hat and the, and the, the hair and everything. So, uh, Nielsen Schmielsen was uh, Harry Nielsen's first big album. And then he did Son of Schmielsen after that, and then they took a lot of those tracks and put them together okay. and made this movie. Harry Nielsen never toured. Huh. Yeah, so anybody who was seeing him in this movie was seeing him perform, which mm -hmm. they didn't get to see often. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's basically the Son of Dracula, Countdown, um, is his, it's time for his, uh, his uh, what do they call that, his coronation to oh, be the yeah. king of the underworld. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. his father, Dracula, who looks like a, like a chubby Uncle Fester with, with fangs, right. um, he's killed by someone mysterious. Mm -hmm. So now Countdown is, t is called back to London to you know, take over the world of the... Uh, okay. But he, Ascend the throne. Yes, but he prefers to play rock and roll music. I mean, wouldn't anyone? Yeah. I mean, okay, first of all, I can tell you firsthand, running the world is a lot of work. I bet. I bet. Being the boss is a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. I don't want a boss bitch anymore. No. <laughs> you want someone else to, and you just kind yeah. of go around for the ride. Mm -hmm. So this movie is basically a very loose reason to show Harry Nielsen doing Nielsen Schmielsen songs and Son of Schmielsen songs. Um, Jump Into the Fire is in here. You ever see Goodfellas? Yes. When uh, when Ray Liotta's all coked out and he thinks the helicopter is following him, yeah. That's uh, that song is in there. Um, great fucking album. Uh, and the only new song for it was Daybreak, um, which was a huge song, and then it was covered by Mickey Dolenz from the Monkees mm. later on. Yeah. And I should do the Monkees movie head eventually, because do you know who wrote the Monkees movie? Who? Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Nicholson. Yep. Jack. It was also Tor Johnson, the famous Swedish wrestler who's in Plan 9 from Outer Space. Oh, yeah, yeah. His last film as well. Head's a weird one because people wanted a, um, 
and it's nothing to do with Son of Dracula, mm-hmm. but they wanted something more like the Monkeys TV show, which is kind of bubblegum, and then instead they made this like satirical take on 1960s ca- uh, counterculture and yeah. Vietnam, right. and it had nothing to do with like the show. Right. So that was interesting. But um, so this is a, this is considered a lost movie okay. because uh, obviously Apple was taken over a lot of other companies. Mm-hmm. So the Beatles, this music is not owned anymore by them. Mm-hmm. So it never got a v- even a VHS release because Ringo was so embarrassed by it that he tried to hide it. Right. But there were film prints struck. Um, there's a really lousy version of it that's free on YouTube. You can watch. Uh, but the movie itself, um, I saw it at a lost film festival. Mm-hmm. I have a review, uh, might have already happened or didn't happen yet for a Andy Milligan movie called Blood, which was also a lost movie. Um, but it's just funny, you could just tell that Ringo and Harry Nielsen were both heavy drinkers and said, I know, let's make a vampire movie with Merlin the Magician. And it's weird that I never knew this movie existed until the 2010s because you these are two of the biggest names in the history of rock and roll. Yeah. You know, there's no stakes to the plot. Uh, Baron Frankenstein is in it. Van Helsing is in it, but you don't know it's Van Helsing. Um, Harry Nielsen uh, falls in love with this woman who is the daughter of the Baron, and he only knows that she's not a monster when he, like, undoes her top and he noticed that she has tan lines and he's freaked out by that because he's a vampire and has this great scene where he turns into a rotoscoped bat and then it's like this little cartoon bat that flies away and it's really bad looking um but there are no stakes to this movie uh you know they literal ne- stakes uh, there's no stakes to the movie whatsoever he just doesn't want to become a, right. the king of the vampires because he likes playing rock and roll music I mean, there's not really a lot of draining blood. There's the valet who kind of takes care of everything for him. His motives are, are specious at, at best. Uh, you know, um, it's literally just an excuse to have these scenes of these great musical performances. It's so fuck Again, John Bonham playing drums in a vampire movie right. with right. Harry Nielsen as Dracula. Right. Like, it's fucking... And I have the poster right here, and this is yeah. probably the hardest poster I've ever had to find... Because when I saw this, it's such an odd... It'd be like seeing, like, who's your favorite actor of all time? I, I, uh, I'm not qualified to answer that question. Okay. Right now. Who's your favorite musician of all time? I am also not qualified okay. to answer that question. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't like to pick favorites. All right. I like so many. But just imagine finding out that your favorite musician of all time played Merlin the Magician in a movie. It would be like... The, uh, yeah. in, in Mexico in the 1960s, um, there was these, uh, like Santa Claus movies and these little Red Riding Hood movies and, uh, mm-hmm. Tom yeah. Thumb movies. And they always had like, Santa Claus would be friends with Merlin. Right. It was, and then that one time Santa had to fight Satan. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was yeah. Santa Claus versus, uh, Lucifer, which, or the devil or whatever. It was a Mexican Christmas music yeah. movie, but it just feels like that kind of thing where they're just combining all this stuff together. Yeah. And the acting's fine for what it is. Freddie Farmer directed it, so there's obviously some really good cinematography. Um, there's a major design flaw where they go to the netherworld and everyone's like wearing like cheesy makeup and, and right. masks up. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Monster Club with um, with uh, with Vincent Price? I don't think and I have. John Carradine. I don't think I have. Okay, it was played it on Joe Bob. Familiar, though. I'll show you the one scene. There's a great. It, so, it's not the one with the like mansion that they're all locked in. Right? No, yeah, this is they're at a club, okay. and it's a it's uh, a, a famous horror writer meets a vampire, and the vampire right. is telling him about all the different subsections, and like all the segments right. have like Peter Cushing and and right. Dan of Donald Pleasance and stuff. Right. Right. But there's one where each one is broken up by a musical act, and there's one where this girl is singing this song called The Stripper, and it's the song's great. Yeah. She's fucking belting it out in a movie where people are wearing silly vampire and werewolf masks. Mm-hmm. But they do a thing where she goes in front of like a light where she's like taking her clothes off, and then it obviously becomes rotoscope, and she's taking she takes and all she her clothes takes off, off her, her skin, skin yeah. and it's great. I love that, it. That's a gif that I send yeah. sometimes. Yep. Well, when I'm terrorizing. But it's from Monster Club. And then I Club. unsend it. Did you see? Did you see? Unsend. Yeah, yeah. Watch our Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers review for that whole story. Oh yeah, no, I've been terrorizing people. Yeah, you're it's a boy terrorizer. Fun. 
Um, but yeah, no, it kind of is in that vein of movie where you had this like weird mixture of try like they were trying to make the first ever rock and roll vampire movie. Oh, they did. Yeah, because then you years they later did. would have something like Rockula, right? Or uh, Slaughterhouse Rock, where um, Tony yeah. Basil is the monster in that one. Tony Basil, the uh, Hey Mickey. We could do a Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers like musical, musical movie. movie. Oh, no. Like okay, so like Hannibal the Musical, but with strippers. I just had an amazing idea. West Side Gory. Oh. <gasps> okay. Yeah, we could do that. Because <laughs> right, do you remember when? Um, do you remember when? Yeah. What's the kid's name from uh, from High School Musical? He went on to be like uh, he's in the Baywatch movie. Zac Efron. Zac Efron. Yeah. So Zac Efron played Ted Bundy in a Netflix yeah. movie, yeah, and he's all yeah. like muscular. Oh yeah. I was like, here's my idea. Ready? Cape, shirtless, top hat, muscles, foggy London streets. Okay. Jacked the Ripper. Jacked the Ripper. Ooh. Yes. yes bring Muscular, it. shirtless, Jack the Ripper. Kill me, Daddy. Kill me. Uh. See, no, we I can make that. We can make this. Work. I have always so yeah. I, I have no musical talent whatsoever. I no. know all this nonsense about yeah. musical facts. The other day, you called me your own personal. Uh, Kazam or Shazam? What Shazam, was it? Shazam. Yeah, you're, you're like my Shazam. I'm yeah. Like, hey, we're, what is this? We went to a Mexican restaurant and oh, yeah. um, subterranean homesick alien from Radiohead came on, and I was like, "Oh, it's that." And you're like, "Oh, you're like my own personal Shazam." Yeah, like, like who needs Shazam <laughs> anyway? Well, I I kind of gave up on Shazam because like I listen to a lot of uh, DJ sets where mm -hmm. they have unreleased tracks, yeah. so Shazam can't find them anyway. Okay. I'm just like, I love that. Uh, was it you, Metz, and I, and we were trying to figure out what that song was at that burger place, and we were like holding it up and oh, we just yeah, would yeah. not get it? Yeah, it was um, not. Yeah, I don't know. I, but I'm a big music nerd, especially yeah. classic rock. And uh, But again, like something like this, I don't, I've never directed a musical before. I've never worked in a musical, but I've always dreamed about making a musical. You know, I, ever since I was a little kid, like seeing West Side Story or, or Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, right. uh, stuff like that. And then even like, look at like the opening sequence of uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Right. He I, makes a Bisbee Berkeley style, you know, anything goes. I didn't see it. You've never seen it? Wow. You've I've been never busy. seen Temple of Doom. I've been busy. Wow. Well, I think I did, but like I wasn't paying attention. I'm busy. Okay. I'm busy. And it'll bring us up to another review. I don't know if it'll come right. out or not come out yet. But uh, Temple of Doom was written by a husband and wife team that also wrote oh. American Graffiti, and they also directed um, uh, Howard the Duck. That's what ended oh, their yeah, career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I reviewed one I of mean, their movies. It was so yeah, good. I know. It, I reviewed their movie uh, that they made early on in their career, which is called Messiah of Evil or Dead People. Mm -hmm. And that's a really cool, beautiful, weird, underappreciated movie right. um, that's kind of my first introduction to Lovecraft as well. Mm. Um, no, you, okay, you've never seen that. Have you, uh, you know what's another scene that really inspired me to want to make a musical? Um, have you ever seen Moulin Rouge? Uh, okay, actually, I was about to interrupt you and be mm. like, we have to talk to the. Okay, yeah. so. Musicals that inspire me. Mm -hmm. Moulin Rouge is one of my favorite the movies. The tango. Of all time. I, Roxanne. Roxanne is amazing. It's, it's amazing. I love how they do all the cutscenes. Mm -hmm. Like they, it's fast paced. Yeah. Like, boing 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 boing. Like super fast. Like, do that again. It, Boing, boing, boing. Like, <laughs> so um, I, lo I love the way the editing is yeah. done in that film. It's fast paced. It mm -hmm. keeps you interested. You don't go up and then plateau. You like come up, you come down, you come up and down and, it's, and all over. And it's fluid and, and how they funny. cross over. When you go from yeah. the actual tango to... Uh, to The tower? Well, to tower. Uh, and then you have like Obi-Wan Kenobi scenes where he's outside singing and how they cross into each other. And I just think that that's really fucking cool because he's singing. Oh yeah, you know. One, one, mm -hmm. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, that yeah. was the one time, like you and McGregor. Oh, by the way, you could call me. <laughs> There's a few. No, people he's I with um, he's with the chick from. Uh, she's on uh, Ahsoka now, but she oh, was yeah, yeah. she was in okay. Sky High so and Scott Pilgrim. Let's be clear. Okay. I don't want to marry him. I just said he. You just want to see me. his lightsaber. I just want him to call me. You want him to be like, hello there. Hey. <laughs> but any, anyway, anyway, anyway. Or some other oh, musicals. Oh, okay, okay, so Moulin Rouge, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, Chicago, for different yes. reasons. Dark, sultry, powerful. The, uh, Women can be killers, the too. The tango in that one as well. The uh, the cell block the, tango. The cell block. He uh, had yeah. it coming. He had it coming. <laughs> he had it coming. 
Yep. I, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm all about that. So both of those are very, very good. Mm -hmm. And I love those. And then, uh, so Cannibal the Musical, I already mentioned. Oh, it's so, great. So like a little bit out there, a little bit weird, kind of funny. Is your like, heart as full as a baked potato? Are you having a spadoinkle uh, egg? <laughs> uh, that was their student film. I know, I and know. Trauma, Trey, Trey Parker, and yeah, and yeah. Trauma bought it, and that's their part yeah. of the Trauma family. Yeah. Same thing with uh, James Gunn, you know. I need, okay, so I want to be in something really ridiculous mm -hmm. and campy like Campbell. Musical. Yeah. Like, no, I, I couldn't. Mean, I can't that. write music. I can't sing that no. well, but I mean, I so I can imitate mm -hmm. more so than I can just do my yeah. own thing. So like, if I can hear it, I can. And then you have like, and then you have the horror, like obviously this one, Son of Dracula. Right. Um, but you know, you go Rocky Horror Rocky. Picture Show, its sequel, which I prefer, Shock Treatment. I, um, I saw both of those. Mm -hmm. Don't come for me, but Rock, like Rocky Horror like bothered me because of some of the portrayals of people of other orientations. Like it, it, was it rubbed me wrong. I know it was, a, it was a thing about the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it until recently okay. and it rubbed me the wrong way because of a lot of mm -hmm. that. So. But I mean, it was a star, like. I know. Tim I, Curry I, I know. is like a living cartoon character I know. in that movie. I know. You know? And, I know. Yeah, and, but uh, Shock Treatment was the sequel. I know. And that one kind of, uh, you know, predicted uh, reality television. Right. And it had Jessica Harper in it. Mm -hmm. And she is in my favorite horror musical, which is The Phantom of the Paradise. I think I've actually seen that. Okay. It's been a really long time. I would have to go back. Directed to by Brian De Palma. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, it starts off with narration from uh, Rod Serling of the okay. Twilight Zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul Williams wrote all the music. Paul Williams, at the height of like every song in the nineteen seventies, was written by Paul Williams. Yeah, you know, yeah. all the fucking stuff for the for the the Muppets and everything. Yeah, so yeah. no, I've always wanted to make a a musical just because I love the idea of choreography and editing yeah. together. If you look at something like uh, Edgar Wright's Baby Driver. Yep. How the editing is so fucking tight to the edits, mm -hmm. like, or to the beats of the music. Oh, yeah. It's crazy the way and you're th able to do that, that. Like, that's so hard. You can honestly, um, like, AI will help you, like, line stuff up. Mm. And you still have to go in and, like, make yeah. adjustments. But it'll it'll get you there um, pretty quickly, which is helpful. Just that level of energy. Again. Like, the sync button if you're a DJ. Yeah, yeah. Ah, don't do okay. that. It's not cool. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I grew up on musicals. Yeah. Um, and obviously, this isn't. It, yeah. Son of Dracula isn't a musical musical. It's just filled with these musical interludes right. and stuff like that. But I thought they're extremely well done. Yeah. And the sets are really cool too. But again, this is a. It's a terrible movie. I forgot. Like one of my favorite musicals of all time. Oh my god! The um. Oh, what's it called? I don't For, know. Zydri. Oh, oh Repo! Not. Repo the Jedi Opera! Yes! Yeah, yep. Yes! Yeah, yes! Yep. Oh my, I was like drawing, like, I'm like, oh, wait! With uh, Paris, Paris Hilton, Hilton, Bill yeah. Mosley, yeah. uh, the dude from Skinny Puppy, uh -huh. uh, uh, yeah. uh, Paul Sorvino, um, and the guy from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, who, yeah. was, the, uh, who was the librarian, yeah. who also played uh, uh, Frankenfurter on Broadway right. mm -hmm. after Tim yeah. Curry had left. Right. So, right. And he's a great singer. Yeah. Um, no, uh, no, that's one of my favorite. And like, I feel like it didn't get oh, the respect no, in, it like, didn't. Like, um, that it deserved. It, like, I would totally be in something like that. It was that. And the girl who was the little girl in... Spy Kids, oh, yeah. Susanna Vega, I think, or yeah, and then she plays right. the daughter, mm -hmm. and then she has that great scene where she has a seventeen song, and then Joan Jett's there playing guitar, yep. and the skeletons dancing. That's fucking awesome. No, I really, yeah, I we really, need to do something like that. I really Let's dug do that, that movie. Yeah, yeah, the we rock got, and roll. We gotta have strippers though. It's fine. We can make a stripper horror stripper musical. Ooh, what? A, okay, like Repo, mm -hmm. but the strippers. By the body parts to be, and okay. it, it's a, like, do that, and yeah. they, oh, they, it's like they they're not paying their pimp. Oh, okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not, I, hey, excuse me. You All said right, paying their pimp. I know, like that. Well, okay, so like, repo company, like you gotta have the repo. Like, there's gotta be a reason, right? Okay, we're writing a movie we'll right now. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out. We're workshopping oh. it. Well, because like <laughs> I said to you, I have the poster for Vampire Hookers. Where the tagline is "blood, blood isn't not all they the suck," only thing they um, like so they would have a pimp, you know. So oh, yeah. no, we can we'll figure something we'll out. Figure something no, out. my like, goal I is to my goal is to one day make a horror musical, and I am so not that guy. But my ex uh, 
girlfriend and production partner, she was a stage manager for right. years. Mm -hmm. So I went to so many right. plays and watched them right. making it, and I've always wanted to do that. Um, yeah. But you know, we'll get some. We'll get. There's some... a lot of practice yeah. that goes into that. There's a lot of uh, like rehearsals, oh, yeah. in-person rehearsals. So I mean, it sounds well, like I they... might need to get like a month to month yeah. Airbnb up here. You know? What was? Um, I think it was. Was it Les Mis that they did live singing the movie? I'm not sure. Okay, one of them they did live singing. I even liked Mamma Mia. The movie, I thought that was pretty fun yeah. too. It was all right. I, I like ABBA music though. A lot of those musicals just didn't speak to me. Like I like the darker, mm -hmm. grungy. Yeah. Like you know what? Was, I did like um, Wicked. I, I haven't. I haven't seen that. In that has a movie coming out. I, I know. Yeah. I haven't. I, like I read the book and mm -hmm. I listened to all of the soundtrack yeah. and I love it. I didn't see. Was didn't... it Into the Woods? Johnny oh, Depp was in that one. Into the Woods is really okay. good. You will like that. Into the Woods. I saw Evil Dead the musical. Into the Woods. <laughs> I saw Evil Dead the musical. I saw Toxic Avenger the musical. Uh, well, you know. I could, okay. All right. Yeah. So, but those are okay. fun, fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I love the song in, in Evil Dead. It's like, what the fuck was that? Your girlfriend just turned into a zombie. <laughs> but no, that'd be fun. And Didn't again, feed her in time, I guess. I guess. Yeah. And if you're, and she's not a zombie. She's a deadite. But well, we're, yeah. we're not here All to right. argue semantics. Speaking so if you speaking. get a chance, yes, we should. Eat. Uh, we should check out. Um, if you get a chance, just look up Son of Dracula mm -hmm. on here, uh, or just listen to the album. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, there's some fucking great songs. Uh, At My Front Door is in it, Moonbeam is in there, uh, Without You is in here, Daybreak, uh, Remember, and Jump Into the Fire, and Down, and Harry Nielsen has a ton of songs uh, outside of that, he's written for a lot of other people, I'm a huge fan, big fan of Ringo Starr even, mm -hmm. uh, it's funny because he's, uh, Merlin is in it because he's using astrology to figure out when the best time to coronate Dracula's son is, sure, why not? Um, the but planets are in alignment. Alignment, yeah. Uh, Mercury's in Gatorade again, and who knows? The blue what... Gatorade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because the Ringo voice he's using in this one is kind of the voice he did on Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I actually grew up watching um, Help. Okay. And yeah. Yellow mm -hmm. Submarine. Like that, those were like my childhood movies. Yeah. My parents would take me to like family barbecues or whatever, mm -hmm. and they'd do karaoke, and all the kids would go to the There's... wheels on the bus go, and I'm up there like, help, <laughs> I need to buy it. Like, yeah, no, it was ridiculous. All the parents were like, what is this? Did child? you ever see, um, <laughs> well, did you ever see, uh, speaking of bad musicals, did you ever see uh, Sgt. Pepper's Home with Lonely Hearts Club movie, the movie? No. So they made a movie, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Oh, yeah, movie, no. right. But the Beatles are played by the Bee Gees and, uh, and Peter Frampton. Okay. And it's about uh, Sgt. Pepper had sent uh, a band to, uh, to Europe to end World War II. Right. Which is kind of insensitive in sense right. when you go, like, did, yeah. did Sgt. Pepper free the concentration camps? Right. You know? Right. Uh, but then, like, um, so, yeah, so the, the music gets stolen by Donald Pleasance as, as the bad guy uh, music right. producer, and then the Bee Gees and, uh, and Peter Frampton have to take on, like, they beat up uh, Alice Cooper. Aerosmith does Come Together in it. Earth, Wind, and Fire is in it. Steve Martin does Maxwell's Silver Hammer in it. The music is great. The movie's just fucking bizarre. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I thought Help was bizarre. And honestly, like, Yellow Submarine, mm -hmm. like, I feel like... They tried at one they, point... They were on something. Oh, yeah. When the, oh, when the yeah. Eagles came oh, back yeah. from India? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Things changed. Oh, yeah. But, um... Oh, yeah. And again, it's just so weird that they had so much power and, and everything yeah. that he's like, hey, I'm going to make this, this Hammer-style... Dracula movie with mm -hmm. Merlin the Magician and people were just like, yeah, sure. Oh, why yeah, not? yeah, you know? why not? Like, yeah, you should do you that. You wrote a song about an octopus garden in the shade. Um, no, I, I know a lot of people who hate the Beatles. I, d um, I wouldn't say that I know them then. No, yeah, it's crazy. Would not admit that. Did you ever see Across the Universe? Yes. The one that Amy Pascal, I think, did? And, yeah, yeah. It, like, it... Mm, it was okay. It was okay. Yeah. Like, it bothered me for some reason. I was like, this isn't right. Like, for I me, did like, because like, I grew up on... Mm -hmm. it, it, and it was uh, Marilyn Manson's ex-girlfriend, I think, was the lead female in that right. one. And then Selma Hayek is in the Happiness is a Warm Gun segment. She's yeah. the sexy, uh, you know, heroin mm -hmm. nurse. 
I thought that was kind of cool. She's like 50 something years old and she posted a picture in her bikini the other day. And oh, I was like, yeah. Holy shit. Well, I mean, you did you see any of the Magic Mike movies? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know how. A woman are... shouldn't have to choose. No, she shouldn't. It's just not fair. Like, you won the genetic lottery. I did? Yeah, like, you're like one of those people who, like, won the genetic lottery. And then I'm like, I'm like hanging out under a bridge asking Billy Goats three questions and they want to get past. You're a bridge troll. Are you telling me you're a bridge troll? I'm a chud. Okay, okay. First of all, I didn't win the genetic lottery. I work very hard. At yes, but there needs to be. Fitness. I know, but there has to be a like. You can't build a house on a faulty foundation. Right. You can't build a castle on a bed of sand. No, exactly. It's not a good idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could lay down piers. You could properly read it. All right. Well, if I have enough money, I'm going to lay down some piers and try to fix this, you know? I, mean, <laughs> I said I used to have an ex-girlfriend. And I took a line from Hellboy with her, and I said, you know, I can only promise you two things in life. I'll always have your back. And I'll always look this good. <laughs> I mean, it couldn't get it worked more exactly. <laughs> it, hey, it worked on her at the time, right? Right. You know, right. but uh, uh, my favorite one that I heard lately was uh, a guy trying to impress me, like mm-hmm. trying to sell me a line about like, oh yeah, I'll take care of you. Mm-hmm. I'm independently wealthy, and I was like, oh yeah, how'd you make your money? Get this, the line, silent Velcro. That's from uh, Garden State. Is it? Yeah. Oh, and I thought it was original. No. Oh, you. Ooh, we need. Yeah. To, okay. Yeah, now I'm really gonna terrorize. Zach that. Braff comes back to his hometown because his mom um, passed away, and one of their friends is uh, invented silent Velcro. So he's. Do you know the sound when you peel it yeah. apart? Like you. Just, mm-hmm. Nothing. Because, yeah, uh, yeah, it's from Garden State. I, yeah, I should probably go back. I, it totally did not dawn on me. Like, I was like, that's clever. Dude. What? And I was like, he had me going for like mm-hmm. half a second. And I was did like, he also want to sit next to you on a swing for five minutes? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. No, that was a different guy. That was a different that guy? That was a different guy. Dating websites are fucking weird, man. They're a lot I've of never, fun. I've never done one. I've never, like, you know, <laughs> gone into that. But I wouldn't even know, like, these guys, like, you gotta be fucking bold in yourself to, like, put out some of the stuff that dudes put out. What was it? So, some of the messages that I receive are pretty interesting. Oh, I can only imagine. Like, every woman that I know, I imagine that their inbox looks like you opened the puzzle box in Hellraiser. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you gotta, you gotta tiptoe around some no. landmines. You gotta dodge some grenades. Whenever I, like, cause you know, when I, me- cause you and I had a long yeah. conversation. Yeah. But when I message you about being part of stuff, right. I come at things with such, like, kid gloves on because right. I'm like, hey, you know, if you're not cool with this or right. hey, I don't want to sound like a creep or something like that. I'm right. always worried about what people are going to think of me because there is this perception of me that I'm a scumbag because of the stuff that I make. I mean, I'm in that shit. But so. I know, but did you ever, <laughs> do you ever feel like uncomfortable? No, no. Actually, you kind of like overly kid gloves sometimes because like, um, so when we were shooting mm-hmm. the Donald Farmer segment, yeah. like the demon scene and all that, like, you were definitely trying to be like, oh, so gentle. Let's change this yeah, yeah. so nobody gets hurt and let's be careful. Or we don't want to show anything. Like, yeah, or, we're know. like, no, let's go for it. Like, like, yeah, no, it was, it was a lot of fun. I, yeah, I want, you're, you're overly I delicate want people sometimes. to come back and want to work with yeah. us and feel comfortable, yeah. you know. And Fallon's yeah. done stunts and stuff oh, yeah. before. And yeah. yeah, you could take a fall like you yeah. did on Triple Xmas, but I want to make sure that I worry about my actors and my actresses yeah. and my people. I want everybody to be comfortable and happy, you know? Yeah. So but when I read... If, if we were like, hey, let's do this, yeah. you can't be like, oh, I don't want no, to do that. No, no, I know. Like, if you want to do that, well, let's I put, go. Because you had to bring Fallon down to her oh, knees. Oh, yeah. So I got one and got a sweatshirt and put it down so she could do the thing. Yeah. And when she had to, like, rise up, I wrapped the thing with, like, right. sweatshirts and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I want yeah, I want yeah. everybody to be happy. Oh, we had, we had a great time. I know. We were very happy, except that it took until, like, five in the morning, but that was probably but it was also like I sometimes it's very surreal it is. To, uh, to like bring people together for so you write something right. and you go okay how's this gonna come out right. but then next thing you know you have two women laying on the ground like having a blast having a blast with each other and it's just like you got a camera guy there and a lighting guy there and all this kind of stuff and you just think to yourself like how, I think to myself constantly like, how do I fucking talk my friends into I know. doing this oh, shit? I oh, know. The best part is when I was like on. Well, mm-hmm. when I well, it, well one, yeah, one, yeah, one, yeah. one of the scenes where mm-hmm. I was like on top of her, 
And I look over, I'm like, Newt, get behind the scenes photos, what are you doing? And you're like, oh, oh, oh sorry. I'm directing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then, uh, and then I was like, make sure you get a video. And the camera guy, Chris, yeah. he literally like looked up at me and he's like, that's literally, literally what, what I'm doing. doing. <laughs> Well, cause, you know, oh my God, if so I'm just crazy. hanging out, like taking yeah. pictures of you guys, like half n naked and stuff like that, then I'm not paying attention to the frame I mean, and I want to make sure that it's good so we don't have to keep redoing it, you know? Yeah. And, and yes, I do. I see things that I try to disconnect myself from it and be like, you're not looking at this for the titillation factor. You're looking at it to make sure that everything looks right, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'll watch it later yeah. when it's done for the yeah. titillation factor. <laughs> I, I'm glad I did check um, in the camera that one scene where I was like, wait, 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 yeah. we need to add light over here. Yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yep. They came out so mm. good. Oh. Yeah. You guys are going to love this yeah. film. I, this and scene I think, better make it. Well, I, and again, one, no, it's going to. It's going to be all so the, good. All the I stuff, the best thing about a set like yeah. we have mm -hmm. is that it is so collaborative and I'm mm -hmm. never steadfast in being stuck to one idea. Right. The whole idea was that we started wide right. and it has Bring a more reddish uh, color tone. Right. And as we go, it starts to take on blues and purples and mm -hmm. greens and all this kind of stuff. And then we, we funnel it into Very it. So Suspiria. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, That's kind yeah, of yeah. what I'm always going for is that is at least seeing that there's some yeah. thought process right. behind right. it. Um, and you know, you guys yeah. offered some great ideas and we were able to play with stuff. Oh, and... we had fun. Uh, oh, so speaking of rock, Horror. Uh, so what kind of music is going to go in that scene? Do you know? Figure that out. I have a couple okay. synth musicians that I know okay. I can ask to do stuff. Um, okay. Or, But obviously it's going to be Donald's choice. Right, right, um, right. But no, it, even the one we did for Debbie Does Demons had a great score that's right. mixed in with the very ambient industrial right. sound that was for it. Because sound design and... And lighting is so important right. to making it feel like you're just didn't, oh, yeah. you didn't just put the camera on oh, sticks yeah. and just let two people well, talk. Did, did you see the the uh, the what is it Instagram reel the dude that's like walking in playing mm -hmm. the violin yeah. with his buddy on the couch just like da -da -da -da. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god and like running around that mm -hmm. oh that was no so that kind of stuff but even it's that that's yeah. why it's so important because I mean like it could have just been a dude sitting on a couch yeah. and getting up to answer the door. But because of the intensity of the music and like what was happening, and that's what I learned changed. from from yeah. Evil Dead and Evil Dead mm -hmm. Two as a kid is kinetic energy right. in a shot. You know, right. yeah, and some things do have to be static. Yeah. But if you have something going on, it shows that there was more thought behind the scene. Yeah. Um, and again, we're going back to Son of Dracula. Not a great movie. Not a great <laughs> script. Not great acting. But there is something oddly fascinating about it, and there's something in the design of it that I really like. There's a scene at the mm -hmm. end when the valet pulls a curtain and all the monsters get mm -hmm. killed because there's a crucifix and stained glass in the window right. and the light comes through it and there's a shot that's just lighting no them from spoilers. above. No, it's uh, fine. This movie's from 1972. I haven't seen it. Well, you... you spoilers! Listen to Harry Nielsen's music and you've seen the movie. But there's this great shot where it's just lit by the cross. First off, if you're in the underworld and that can hurt people, that's a major design flaw oh, in know. your building. Oh, yeah. But even something like that shows that there's a thought into it. Or the the, uh, the scenes with the, the party guests and the monsters and stuff compared with him playing and stuff like that. And the energy of like going to John Bonham playing the drums and shit. There's something to it. Then you, you have a Freddie Farmer who directed it and you can tell that there's something there. Again, I love a lot of movies that aren't particularly good movies. But there's just something about them that I can grab that I get excited about when it comes to filmmaking or, you know, how music is used in a movie or how, how uh, editing is used in a movie or just one performance or something like that. I just think this is a weird, like, if you had to draw a Hammer movie from, from memory kind of vibe to a movie. But more than anything, it's just the idea that this even exists. It's right. neat to know, go my entire life and not know that this movie existed with two of the biggest musicians of my life. We're in this movie. Well, oh, and so Guns, Girls, and Gambling. Yeah. Like, all the cast that was in that. Yeah. Like, you had no idea that existed. Exactly, and no. And I blind bought it at Vintage and Sock on accident. It's like, really cool to discover things that I didn't even know. And the night yeah. that I saw this uh, was also the night that I saw Skate Town USA. Oh, God. Where Patrick Swayze oh, is. It's like Romeo no. and Juliet on roller skates. Oh, it's so uh, bad. It is terrible, but it's funny that I never did knew you, that movie existed. Did you see um, the BMX movie? What was it? Rad. Rad. Yeah. yeah. It's Rocky on Wheels. Send it's me an so angel bad. with the uh, aunt uh, with, with the, the, the dance yeah. scene on the bikes. Send me an angel. And it was uh, the mom from um, from Rockies in it. Oh yeah. And yeah. Uh, and Aunt Becky from Full House, 
who is also in... Um, Becky from the Block. Yeah, she's also in uh, Amityville 3 with Meg Ryan. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and then you have BMX Bandits in Australia, which um, was one of Nicole yeah. Kidman's first ever movies. I do like me some Nicole. Mm -hmm. I, I feel kind of guilty because I kind of tease and make fun of her, like, AMC. Yeah, movie. I think it's great. I think it's way better than the Regal one. I mean, it's really entertaining, but, like, I think... I feel like she got a boatload of Botox oh, yeah. right before she filmed it. Even, like, her face doesn't move at all. Even in Aquaman, her face doesn't move right. at all. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, it's a little bit more natural in a lot of other films that she's in, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, no, like... Heartbreak feels good here. Heart, yeah, heartbreak can feel good in a place like this on a silver screen yeah and like you can actually see if you look at her like sitting in the audience mm -hmm. at the amc theater or whatever she's sitting there and like right before they cut she goes yeah like she looks off screen like are we done did we get it <laughs> that would be great is shooting the opposite of that where there's the two ushers waiting to clean the theater but nicole kidman won't leave she won't leave she's like did we get it they go walkie-talkie the manager. Uh, hey, Nicole Kidman Nic won't leave. She won't get up. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, and she doesn't even have any popcorn. Yeah, and she's not, yeah. well... She's got a very nice pants suit yes. with, like, the pencil. Ooh, shimmery, mm -hmm. shiny pencil. You know what's great? You ever see that. Eyes Wide Shut? I did a long, So long fucking hot that. in Eyes Wide Shut. And the very last line of the movie is, we should probably fuck. Was her last line of the movie. Yeah. That could be a good closing line for anyone. We should probably eat. Yes, we should. We should probably eat. We should probably eat. All right, eat. so that is my review of Son of Dracula. Oh, yeah, that's what we were doing. Yeah, we're talking about. So we're just talking about whatever. This I is like a video podcast. Derailed. I always get And derailed. I just find a way to just talk about movies. My head is full of nonsense. And oh, uh, no. this is just shit that I love. I just want to talk about things I, I love that... Maybe people don't know about, maybe people don't care about. Someone else can watch it and go, this is the worst thing ever. <laughs> I know someone whose favorite movie is Joanna Man. I've s everyone's... All right, all right, all right. Yeah. You never saw Joanna Man? No. It's Tootsie with basketball. Yeah, with Gabriel Nunez, who is also the dude uh, who dies on the toilet in uh, Friday the 13th 5. Mm. Goddamn enchiladas. All right, guys. Have a good one. Bye.